Shakti Labadiana Visiams. Good afternoon. Good morning, everyone. This conference is broadcasted on YouTube channel. Therefore, I would like to welcome those who are listening to our conference online. Some a few house rules. Could you please take your headphones? To press the channel two, you need to open your uh, table. Those of you who would like to hear the interpretation into Lithuanian language, please choose the right channel. Lithuanian language channel one, English language channel two. This conference is translated, interpreted into a sign language. And those of you who are watching us, you, are, you also can see translation in sign language. First and foremost, I would like to express my gratitude to Mr. Barkas, a member of the Lithuanian Parliament. Thank you for this possibility to have the conference here at the Seamus Conference Hall. All of us are a bit tired of remote uh, events. I would also like to thank our partners the uh, association Pagava and her chairman, Rima, uh, Chair Davicheni, also Vilnius College uh, Faculty of uh, Education. My thanks goes to the international the European Network for Professionals Working with Hear in Hearing Impairment, uh, HYPEN. We have HYPEN members with us today. Therefore, we are able to have the conference and so many presenters. And now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Barkas, member of the SEMAS of the Republic of Lithuania, to open our conference. The floor is yours. Good morning, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to welcome Ms. Svetlana Benyushieni and her team, as well as our guest, Philip Balsier, our guests from uh, France, from Italy, from Poland, Romania, Serbia. I would like to welcome you all at the SEMAS of the Republic of Lithuania. My gratitude also goes to the technical staff and uh, all the advisors and employees of the SEMAS. Thank you for this platform allowing us to speak about the most important things, thing in our life, that is our children, citizens of our countries, future creators. On my own behalf, I can say that I am also a client of this training center of because my daughter was attending the education center for the deaf and hard to hear. And thanks to your activities, we have um, a child that is able to attend the mainstream school and have a full-fledged life. 
we have been really successful. I would like to wish the entire community as uh, the technical equipment allows to establish this connection between the technologies and human bodies. Uh, deaf and hard of hearing uh, sometimes have difficulty speaking and uh, therefore they are sometimes uh, discriminated against. But thanks to you, we have this bridge connecting us and also helping these people to function in the world. Unfortunately, a few years ago, we didn't have this bridge. And now you are the people who help our children to cross this divide. Sometimes we are a bit pessimistic. But I am very optimistic about your activities. You are needed not only by parents and children, you are needed by doctors. Your advice is important. You are needed by mainstream school teachers and for politicians to give advice for all of us to ensure that there is not a single child in Italy, Poland, Romania, France, UK, Serbia, Spain, Lithuania, who wasn't able to cross this bridge. We have a lot to do in this area in order to become stronger and to be able to do more in order to help those who need it. Thank you. This is a little gift from our children, an angel guardian. On my own behalf, I also have a few gifts. I wish you success and thank you for your co-workers and to you. It's a great pleasure to have uh, parents of uh, our children saying thank you. And now I would like to give the floor to the Vice Minister of the Ministry of Education, Science and Sport. Mr. Gijunas, the floor is yours. Members of the Parliament, ladies and gentlemen, Honorable ladies and gentlemen, I will give my welcome word in Lithuania, if I may, because a lot of Lithuanian teachers are probably watching this conference and maybe it will be easier for them to understand this. I would like to express my gratitude, first and foremost, to the Lithuanian Educational Center for the Deaf and hard of hearing, and uh, the head of this organization, Ms. Benushieni. When we speak about inclusive education, we always have in mind that each and every person, despite uh, different characteristics, whether it is a man or a woman, a person with different impairments or not, is a value, and each child is valuable. We have to preserve these values and to assist each and every child. Conferences like this are venues for helping us find ways of assisting children. As Mr. Barkas has mentioned, 30 years ago, 
We experience the end of a very painful period when people with disabilities were kind of not existent in our society. And it's been 30 years, and we still haven't reached what we wanted to. We have to take one more step and help our children to be part of mainstream education. The Lithuanian Educational Center for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing is not only teaching uh, children deaf and hard of hearing, but they also consult other educational establishments. I hope that the presenters from different countries will inspire us and uh, present new ideas on how we can enhance our life together, how we can create a better future for all our children, because all of them are valuable to us. Therefore, I would like to wish all of you, those who are present live and those of you who watch this conference online, to find new ideas and motivation to work and to do our best for children. I would like to wish all the politicians attending this conference, as well as all professionals from municipalities, as well as teachers, to find new ideas and to be inspired on how we can make our education more inclusive, inclusive and better. I wish you all an enriching conference and impressions that would inspire you for your future work. Thank you very much. I would like to give you a symbolic gift. Uh, this is done by our students. Thank you. And now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Belsur, President of Hypen. Good morning to everyone. Uh, I would like to first to thank Mr. Bacas uh, to welcome us in the Lithuanian Parliament and to invite us to participate in the Conference on Inclusive Education for Children with Hearing Impairment in Europe. Dear Svetlana, dear Mr. Gijunas, uh, the members of IPEN Network are very honored to be able to contribute to making the experiences of inclusion for children with hearing impairment in Europe better known. I would like to tell you a few words about IPEN, our European network. IPEN so is a European network of expert professionals in the field of hearing impairment. Today, we are almost 20 members from 12 European countries, so from Lithuania, Poland, Romania, Slovakia, Slovenia, Czech Republic, Serbia, Italy, Spain, Netherlands, Belgium and France. And we represent the professional practices in the support for hearing impaired children in Europe. The objective of IPEN is to exchange and to develop with members model of best practices in the field of education and training for people of all ages who are deaf and or hearing impaired, but also to develop and to manage projects on specific topics in which members are interested and with fundings from external sources and EU programs like Erasmus+. Plus. Most of our members are working in the field of, uh, in the education of children with hearing impairment 
and the inclusion, the inclusion of people with fewer opportunities is a priority for the European Union in its 2021-2027 funding plan. Education and teaching systems in Europe are moving towards inclusive, inclusive education. And Europe also wants to facilitate funding for projects promotive, in, promoting inclusive education. However, situation may uh, differ from country to country, and today we are going to hear about the different Europe-wide experiences for inclusive education. And we are very delighted to be able to contribute in the promotion of European practices in this field. So thank you in advance for this organization. Thanks to Svetlana and Jane as moderators and for this day. And I wish you all many interesting exchanges. Thanks. Thank you, Philippe. So I forgot to present I'm sorry, I've forgotten to introduce the moderator of the conference. It's Jane Craig. She is a hyphen coordinator. So she and me, Svetlana Benyushenye, will be moderating the conference. I wish you an interesting conference. Inclusive education is being promoted in all countries. In Lithuania, in 2010, the, convention, the UN Convention on Disabilities was ratified. In 2024, the law on education will be amended. Therefore, we have a number of questions and concerns on uh, the future adjustment. We are sharing our experience and we are sharing best practice. N now I would like to give the floor to Mr. Enrico Dolz uh, from Turin Institution for the Deaf from Italy. Enrico, the floor is yours. Good morning to everyone. And uh, first of all, thank you to the organizer for this conference. I think it's a very good uh, opportunity to share and also to make like uh, a point all together because uh, we all are in IPEN, but sometimes it looks like uh, we don't know exactly what is happening in our countries because uh, things are changing very quickly. And so um, I think this is very important, uh, not only for your country, but also for us, to, um, to check all together what we, what we are doing now. Uh, my presentation is from Italy. I'm Enrico Dolz, and uh, I'm the principal of the Institute for the Deaf of Torino, uh, which is in northwest of the country. And uh, uh, that is a very old institution. Uh, which uh, passed all the um, uh, history of the education of the deaf since the very beginning until uh, the contemporary world. And so um, uh, my presentation um, will be also with this uh, historical point of view. Um, because Italy chose uh, inclusion um, as one of the first countries in Europe. And uh, so um, I'm, I hope not to be boring for you, uh, but my uh, presentation will have, uh, in, uh, some, in particular, an historical point of view. And um, about uh, the period before inclusion, I have to say that uh, in Italy, a school uh, for deaf, but also for blind, and also for different disabilities, uh, were opened uh, since the end of 18th century. Um, uh, the first school was in Rome, and the second in Milano. The third school is the one of Torino, which I represent. And uh, um, all that schools looked 
to the model um, that was born in Paris um, at the end of the same uh, 18th century. At the end of the 18th century is a very important period for special education because we can say that uh, uh, special education was born in that period. Uh, in, the, um, uh, in Paris, in uh, the uh, last 20 years of uh, 18th centuries, we, are, we have some uh, crucial uh, people which um, designed the idea of uh, educability of people with disabilities. We have um, De Le Pay, which opened the first school for the deaf in the world. But in the same town and in the same period, uh, Mr. Braill created the code for blind. Or, for example, um, the professor Pinel uh, invented psychiatric uh, science. So it's a very crucial period for all us professionals who, who work with uh, people with disabilities. And uh, in Italy, uh, uh, we looked to that model, and um, a lot of schools were opened immediately after the proposal made by Ebbe um, uh, de Le Pay in Paris. Uh, since, as you know, Italy is a very Catholic country, or at least it was a very Catholic country, mainly uh, the schools for the deaf were opened like charities and uh, um, was under the control of the Catholic Church. Um, then for the whole 19th centuries, um, nothing changed. We had all that establishment for the deaf, mainly boarding schools, mainly under the control of the church. But in 1923, something very new occurred. And the government the, um, uh, of the Kingdom of Italy, in that period it, Italy was a kingdom, decided that, that it was the time for the government to take in charge the education of the deaf and uh, not to leave everything to the church. So uh, a new uh, revolutionary law in 1923 was, uh, um, was issued uh, and uh, um, compulsory education for children with disabilities uh, was set up. And uh, uh, I have to say that it was a very modern law because uh, um, while for hearing children, uh, compulsory education was up to 14 years old. For every child with disability, it was up to 16 years old. The idea was that children with disabilities needed more time to be educated. And uh, um, the idea, of course, uh, we are uh, one century ago, exactly. Uh, the idea was that um, uh, people, uh, students with disabilities, um, uh, would have to live in the institute for a certain time, but then to uh, come back to their home and be productive for, for the society. So a longer, a longer period was justified also to make them productive uh, citizens. Um, the school system in 1923, uh, you can uh, see that the period was the fascist period, so uh, it was uh, not a completely democratic uh, period, I would say. Uh, it was so a kind of elitist system. And the school system was divided in three groups. The first one was a special school for special child. So school for the deaf, school for the blind, school for um, students with autistic spectrum, etc. Then, um, so completely separated uh, school system. Um, students with learning disabilities or with other kind of uh, disadvantages were in the mainstream, but not in the classroom. So for them, we had uh, um, uh, separate classes into the normal school system. And all the other, so all the students which were very good, they were in mainstream. And so this was a very elitist system because, of course, the school was designed to produce the elite of the country. While uh, any difference in uh, learning was um, a reason of exclusion from the mainstream education. Then um, this system worked until 1968. You know that this is another um, important uh, page of the history of the world because in 1968 we had a lot of revolution from several points of view. Um, not, um, and not everyone knows that uh, the cultural revolution of 1968 affected also the education of students with disabilities, at least in Italy. 
because um, in that period, um, uh, the um, process of uh, designing an inclusive system in the education started from the uh, from a movement against uh, exclusion and against uh, the so-called total institutions. The first total institutions to be destroyed, and I use this uh, word, you can see the picture, uh, it is a wall destroyed by the director of the first asylum in Italy, and it was the director who take a machine and destroyed the walls of its own uh, institute. To, uh, it, it, it is very symbolic. Uh, it represented the idea to open the total institutions to the widespread society. So um, it was a very strong movement against every kind of exclusion. And the first uh, uh, institutions destroyed by, the, by this idea were asylums for people with mental illness. But three years later, in 1961, started the problem for the school. Because um, uh, parents of children with disabilities started to ask for inclusion. They didn't want to um, uh, be far from the child in boarding schools. And they asked the government to um, give the permission to enroll their children in mainstream schools. What happened that um, the government issued a, a first law that was kind of a disaster. Because um, um, we call that period the period of unregulated or uncontrolled integration. I have to say that I don't know exactly how to translate that. that in Italy, we use the, the word selvaggio, that is like feral, is like wild, the wild integration. But uh, John suggested me to use unregulated um, integration. Why it was unregulated? Because the government says to, said to families, OK, you want to enroll your child in the normal school? Just do it. But I, uh, I will not give you any provision, any support. And, um, and uh, I will give the permission to the old special schools to still work as usual. And that happened. Um, families started to enroll their child in mainstream schools, but under their responsibility and also under their cost. Um, this kind of system, of course, could not go further. So protests against uncontrolled uh, integration soon uh, developed all over Italy, and a parliamentary commission of inquiry was set up. This parliamentary commission of, of inquiry decided that this disaster cannot go further. And a new law was issued in 1977 uh, following the result of the parliamentary uh, uh, commission. And the new law is a pillar law for school system in Italy, is the law um, 517 of 1977. So it's is already a kind of old law, decided uh, 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 suddenly to close the special schools. And uh, in, that, uh, um, in that year, uh, students with disabilities could still be enrolled in special schools. But uh, the idea was to close them in a, in a, after a very short period of uh, uh, transition. And the, in 1977, the law established a new kind of professional that was the specialized support teacher to support students in mainstream schools. By 1977, the school system in Italy was centered on mainstream education for everyone. I have to say that in a way is also some ideological point of view, because there are many issues and uh, not everything works well, uh, but it's a very strong political choice. And, uh, and uh, even if there are many difficulties, um, basically, um, this choice is uh, very, very strongly supported by families. Uh, the last step of, the, of, the, of that history is the transition from integration to inclusion. Uh, these two words are not uh, the same, are very, very different in their meaning because the period of integration was based on providing support, while inclusion is, basing, uh, is based on make uh, a new uh, environment. 
So from one way, the period of integration says, okay, the world is like that. You are welcome uh, if you have a disability. And uh, to welcome you, I give you some support. But inclusion is something very different. Because the point of view is completely different. Uh, uh, integration is following exclusion. So people with, dis with disabilities were not in the world in the period of integration. And so integration provided support to welcome them. But inclusion starts from the uh, fact that people with disabilities are with the, within our society. So it's not a matter of giving them support. It's a matter to change the society. And uh, inclusion is based on the idea of universal design for learning. It's based on the idea of accessibility. And uh, I would say of a universal accessibility. And um, it's based on the idea of design for all, where I would say that the design for all is designed for us, because we all are, um, we all have needs in terms of accessibility, even me, that I'm officially without a disability, but I have accessibility needs in many uh, situations. And um, the school system in Italy was reformed in 2012, accordingly to this inclusion system, and uh, accordingly to the OECD classification of special needs. So now we have uh, uh, support and or adaptations, because the new idea is not to provide always a support, but to provide adaptation of the environment for three different categories of uh, disability students. Students with disabilities, the, the old dis disabilities, deaf, blind, autistic, etc. Students with specific learning impairments, dyslexia, dyscalculia, dyspraxia, etc. In that case, for instance, in Italy, the system does not provide any support, uh, but provide a whole range of uh, adaptation and uh, uh, like a recommendation to the teacher how to modify the learning environment. And the students with the socioeconomics and uh, linguistic disadvantages. So we, we can see that in OECD classification, we are also moving from the ideology of disability as an illness, a, a disability as, a, as a something which is related to health system, to something which is related to social, because uh, in the, our previewed, previous system, everything was based on a paper given by a doctor. So we are uh, authorized to provide accommodation, adaptations, or support only if a doctor says us that we have to do that. But now, the responsibility is of us. And we are not doctors, doctors. we are pedagogists, we are, we are teachers. And so we, we can, we can uh, avoid to be so carefully um, focusing on uh, impairment while we should focus on the environment. And we, so we can uh, find some uh, problems in children even if there is no diagnosis. And the, the third category is this one. There is no, nothing to say from a medical point of view, but they are still under our umbrella of special needs. Um, what happened about evaluation and, and examination? This is a crucial point for schools because uh, um, um, uh, we can say, okay, um, mainstream is very good, but then what we can do when uh, there are examination? And um, uh, Italian law um, uh, is organized like that. We have two possibilities. The first one is if the student uh, uh, doesn't have any intellectual disabilities, and uh, uh, so it can uh, reach more or less the objective of the school, um, intermediate and final evaluation will be done uh, with the same adaptation he got during the study. So if during the scholastic year he got support teacher, sign language interpreting, or uh, some other ad accommodation, uh, he has the right to have the same ad adaptation during the examination. And the program of the school is the same, 
but if the students um, uh, have disabilities, certified disabilities, we can also use the idea of a minimum objectives. So the, the student can be tested not uh, um, about the whole program of the school, but about what the school thinks is necessary to take six, uh, the sufficient rate uh, uh, for normal students. So uh, the idea is that uh, the student with disability can have um, a final degree as hearing a disability or as a student without a disability if he is able to reach at least the basic knowledge of the school with adaptation and with support. Um, in, uh, there is a second possibility if the students uh, um, have uh, uh, wider disabilities and uh, so the, um, their program is too different from the program uh, given by the Ministry of Education and, by, and uh, is too far from the objective of the school, uh, the student uh, can follow a different program which is designed accordingly to if need, need to his need and to his uh, objective. So the objective are not the one of the school. The objective are the one of the child. And uh, the final examination will be accordingly to the objective of objectives of the child. But uh, at the end of the uh, secondary school, the degree is just a certified of skills. It's not a legal degree. What is the difference? Actually, just that the, the student cannot be enrolled in the university. Uh, because um, the degree has any legal value as a degree. Uh, but it's a kind of uh, uh, um, certification of skills uh, that are uh, reached, that are achieved. Um, about uh, the specific system for the deaf today, uh, in Italy, in general, special schools for the deaf are not allowed, as are not allowed any other kind of school for special students. Um, however, we have uh, um, some bilingual schools that are a kind of in-between special and mainstream schools. Bilingual schools are schools um, uh, with mainly hearing children, hearing children without any disability, so mainstream students in, of a mainstream school. But in bilingual schools, uh, are enrolled maybe two, three, four, five deaf children in the same class. And this class usually um, um, have uh, um, uh, different support like sign language interpreter or sometimes deaf teachers together with uh, hearing teachers. So um, those uh, are very uh, strange schools because they are bilingual in the way that they are bilingual in Italian and Italian Sign Language. Um, this kind of school are mainly the choice from families which uh, have deaf background. So deaf families with deaf children mainly choose this kind of school because they are focusing on sign language and on accessibility of the scholastic content. And also they are very, very uh, happy to have a deaf mate, and not only hearing mate. Uh, so um, to stay together for them is a something, is a positive uh, point of view. Uh, many of these uh, bilingual schools belong to former institute for the deaf, like in my case, in my, my school, we have one of these bilingual schools. Then the, um, the system is based on uh, two kinds of professionals which are provided to mainstreamed deaf students. A support teacher. A uh, support teacher is uh, a worker of the Ministry of Education. Um, and uh, so is provided by the central school system. The same system which provides uh, professor of mathematics, Italian, science, etc. 
um, and usually he um, doesn't uh, have any specific uh, specialization on deafness, but is like a pedagogist of the inclusion. So they are specialized, but not on specific disabilities. They are specialized on the designing of inclusion. They are I, like the architect of inclusion, but they, they usually don't know sign language, for example. They don't know Braille. Okay? Um, for, uh, to cover the area of specific languages and specific techniques for deaf, we have the communication assistant. Uh, which is a kind of teacher, uh, is more in the field of education than the teaching, uh, because this makes more flexible uh, the professional role. For instance, um, the communication assistant is allowed to work also at home of the child, uh, while the teacher not, in Italy at least. And uh, communication assistant uh, sometimes are sign language interpreter if the, ch the family chooses that. They are provided not by the Ministry of Education, but they are provided by local government. And uh, this kind of professional is specialized in the specific disability. We have at least three kinds of this assistant. One for the deaf is called communication assistant. Uh, but for instance, the one for the blind is called autonomy assistant, and autonomy and mobility assistant. So they are specialized. Uh, for specific disabilities. Then we have speech therapy. Uh, speech therapy in Italy uh, is something which is not related with the school system. It's completely 100% under the health system. So it's provided by hospital or cabinet only. Uh, it's not possible, school cannot uh, uh, hire speech therapist because speech therapists are uh, in the sector of uh, medicine and the health system. Then uh, cochlear implants are provided for free, and the situation in Italy now is that more than 95% of newborn child, uh, newborn children, sorry, are uh, implanted very, very early. Very, very early means six months, eight months, nine months, and uh, uh, this kind of children usually ask for mainstream only. And sometimes they ask for communication assistant, uh, but no sign language, if they see sign language, no at all. Uh, but usually they don't ask for support teacher, because they think that the child is not disabled. It's just a deaf which now is hearing. That is not completely true in my point of view, but um, is what families claim. Uh, but I have to say that mo uh, practically uh, only deaf from deaf families are not implanted. Uh, there are some open questions and critical issues. Uh, the first one I wanted to emphasize is identity. Uh, deaf identity in such a totally inclusive system is really challenging. And that's why different options arise from the deaf community. And the uh, deaf community, uh, I see that here there are probably some member of the deaf community, local deaf community, so maybe you can understand what I mean. Um, deaf community fight to maintain some deaf spaces. And uh, special schools are uh, part of the deaf spaces. And uh, if the deaf schools are closed, something is missing for the deaf community. And that's why uh, in Italy, the deaf community is fighting to maintain at least bilingual schools or bilingual, bilingual classes, since real special schools are not allowed at all. Then, second critical issue is resources. Uh, you know that uh, we, uh, we come from a period of big crisis all over Europe, uh, and uh, a lot of spending review decisions. And special education also has been affected by that, and inclusion as a cost. And uh, so uh, what we uh, uh, saw in Italy is that sometimes they started to, to cut the hour. OK, uh, you have 20 hours of communication assistant. This year, 15. 
But then what do you do when you are alone for five hours in the school and you are deaf? Nothing. So this is also an issue that uh, has to be solved. We have some politician here, so uh, you, um, uh, this is for you uh, is your matter, of course. Yeah, but uh, it's uh, uh, a problem that we have to take care also of this. Uh, even if we are teacher and uh, pedagogist, we have to uh, be realistic with the resources because we cannot just design project without taking care of resources. So. And, um, and finally, also, the, there is a kind of discussion about the balance in between socialization and learning. And it looks like sometimes that uh, our system is more um, into socialization and well-being of children than uh, in checking learning outcomes. Of course, we are kind of aware of that, so we, we, we try to understand how to manage this, but this is also a risk. Um, that uh, uh, probably some uh, teaching uh, concepts are easier and more efficient to be passed in the special school than inclusion. Inclusion uh, sometimes uh, is too much into socialization and uh, with being. Uh, my final um, presentation is about an example of a transition from the special school to inclusion, which is my institute. I'd say my, but, uh, of course, uh, uh, I mean, I'm just a worker of this institute, but the institute where I'm working, uh, that as you see, uh, is a very, very old institute because it was opened in 1814, so more than 200 years ago. And uh, for uh, a lot of years, until 1981, uh, the institute was just a boarding school with special schools for deaf, deaf blind, and deaf with multiple disabilities. So um, uh, during all that time, the, uh, the structure of the institute never changed. It, it was just a school with boarding boarding school, dormitory, canteen, and uh, uh, kindergarten, uh, primary, secondary, and uh, vet school. Then we had the inclusion uh, in 1977, and the wave arrived a bit after in, in our school. Uh, they discovered the inclusion five years later in 1981, and uh, um, until 1999, we had this transition period. What happened in that period? Uh, the director, which um, uh, managed the institute before me, uh, they started to accept hearing children. I mean not hearing children with disabilities. I mean hearing children, uh, like uh, normal children, without any disabilities. And uh, they, uh, um, they organized separate, separate parallel classes. Classes for hearing, classes for deaf, one near the other, with some common activities. So they had, uh, I don't know, gym, uh, canteen, uh, and uh, mathematics, uh, but not Italian, for example. Italian was separate, but mathematics was together. And, uh, um, and then uh, when the student finished the school, uh, uh, they uh, get some services to be enrolled in mainstream schools with our support. So uh, our teachers moved to mainstream schools, still working for the institute. They never changed the salary and uh, the, the, uh, the institution belonging, but they worked outside the school, following their students in other schools. But now, from 1999, uh, everything changed again. The, the school system, uh, the parallel school system was closed, and, uh, and uh, the institute was transformed in the center of uh, support for inclusion. So what we now have is still a bilingual inclusive kindergarten and primary school, but this, can, this school is not a special school at all, and children totally mainstreamed in our, in our school. We have very few deaf and a lot of hearing people or hearing children, 
um, our point of view is the support for the deaf. So we accept hearing children in the number we need for the deaf, because our point of view is fo focusing on the deaf. So like hearing children are like a tool for us for inclusion. So if we have four deaf, we take 20 hearing. If we have eight deaf, we can take 40 hearing, you know? And um, this kind of school uh, is in fact practically only for deaf uh, children from deaf families. It's a bilingual school. We have deaf teachers. And if not, uh, we have sign language interpreting full time in the school. Um, but the bigger number of deaf we support is like um, uh, providing one-to-one uh, -one support in mainstream school. So all the other, which are mainly oral children, cochlear implanted children, um, they don't need or don't want sign language. Uh, we provide for them one-to-one -one communication assistant where they are enrolled, so in the school that is near their home. And uh, we do that, of course, with the support, the financial support of the government. Uh, the communication assistant are our workers, and uh, we sent them in probably something like uh, 200 schools because there are at least more or less 200 children, we, uh, deaf children we have in our uh, uh, list, and they are one per school. So we have to do this job that is not easy sometimes from uh, the organizational point of view, but I think it's a good job. Then we are a training center for teachers. Uh, so we um, uh, have a national accreditation uh, by, the, uh, by the Ministry of Education to train the mainstream teacher when they have a deaf child in their class. And this is a crucial action because uh, it's a way to work on the environment. If, if, teacher, if teachers are trained, probably the inclusion will work better. Uh, and then we have a research center about deaf education and language studies. And where we have a lot of deaf uh, co-workers which teach sign language or um, do some research, prepare materials, and are involved in a lot of also European project. So that's all, and uh, thank you. And uh, uh, it was in my time. Yeah. Okay. Thank, you. Uh, thank you, Enrico. Uh, I will say in English. Uh, don't please don't go. Okay. Uh, the, of, uh, of course, Enrico has uh, also a background. You're also a, a professor at the University of Torino. Uh, yes, of special education. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so I, I could hear that from, from your presentation. It was very educated uh, yeah. presentation. You know? Thank you. And um, uh, I, uh, we also uh, we all understand. And from your presentation, then when we talk about uh, inclusion of deaf students, we not only talk about deafness as as a disability but we always talk about identity and about cultural minority and culture and language. So that's the biggest difficulties with, inclusions of, 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 with inclusion of deaf uh, students. Yes, uh, uh, yes, I think that uh, deafness, this is the main challenge of deafness because there are two points of view. The medical point of view, so you are a people with disability. Or the social point of view, so you are like an ethnic minority. And uh, these two point of view sometimes are fighting they are not mixing. And um, in fact, what we are doing now is just to have two different completely population of client Then they never met. And also the, our teachers, there are teachers which are in the deaf community and others that they only know how to change the battery of the cochlear implant. So they are also completely different trained teachers because the, we are speaking about two different population. Uh, deafness, uh, like a word, is almost empty. Doesn't mean nothing, because uh, there are different. Uh, is I don't know here, but uh, in Italy, it's very polarized. There are the ones of the deaf community which act like a minority group, and uh, uh, that are proud to be deaf, and uh, they are proud to show sign language. They are proud to teach sign language, to research about sign language, and then we are. 
uh, the deaf children which are born from hearing families that they say, oh, I'm a disabled, but if you take care of my disability, I will become hearing. So I'm not deaf, I'm hearing impaired, but probably with cochlear implant, I'm hearing. Uh, so it's completely different uh, position, and of course it's completely different methodologies in teaching, and a completely different setting in, for teaching. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, now, I would like to say that we are going to ask questions at the end because we have a session for discussion and questions at the end of our conference. So, could you please write down your questions and then you will have an opportunity to ask the presenters. I would also like to remind uh, all presenters that you have uh, 30 minutes for your presentation. I didn't want to um, stop you, Enrico, because it was very interesting. However, I would like to ask you to not to exceed the time limit allocated for you. Well, this time uh, we uh, haven't shown any, any signs, but in the future, if you see us waving a hand, uh, please understand that your time is up. Thank you once again, Enrique. Thank you. Um, to introduce our next speaker, Joanna Ostrakowska. She is from Krakow Secondary School for Young People with Hearing Impairments in Poland. Good morning. Um, before I start, I wish to thank the representatives of Lithuanian Parliament as well as Lithuanian government, as well as Mrs. Benyushiene for giving us the opportunity to take part in this very interesting conference. Thank you. Um, today I'm going to present the Polish educational uh, system and the inclusion in Polish educational system. And it is quite obvious for me that uh, we are on a different stage than Italy is like Mr. Dorsa already presented. Um, I represented uh, the school in Krakow and this is a special school. So still in Poland, in Polish educational system, we have special schools. Um, at the beginning, I wish to concentrate on the Polish legislative framework. And um, this is the right to education uh, as a fundamental human and citizen right, guaranteed in the most important Polish act, which is the Constitution of the Republic of Poland. And uh, on the other hand, we are obliged to follow United Nations obligations uh, about the human rights. What is more, there is um, law of education on school education and provisions uh, from 2016 uh, that um, defines the obligation for education and for inclusive one too. Um, among the provision of Article 1 of the um, Constitution, there is providing the possibility of learning in all types of schools for disabled children and young people to exercise their right to education and care as suitable for the age and stage of development. The law also defines types of disabilities of children and adolescents. On the other hand, we have also teacher's charter and provisions of the teacher's charter that define requirements uh, to become a teacher and also to become a teacher in inclusive um, way. So what are the detailed uh, solutions included uh, in those um, legislation policy? Um, in the framework, we, are, we have uh, conditions for organizing education, 
uh, upbringing and care for students with special educational needs in mainstream kindergartens and schools or integration department, as well in a special kindergartens and schools like one of those which I represent. We have also core curriculum for preschool education and education in individual type of schools, including for students with special educational needs. And there are also defined issuing judgments and opinions on the need for special education by relevant centers. Um, in the educational law, we'll find also types and operational principles for public institutions enabling education and upbringing of students with special educational needs who cannot attend kindergarten or school in their place of residence. There are also principles of organizing rehabilitation and educational activities for children and youth with special educational needs and principles of providing and organizing psychological and pedagogical support in public kindergartens, schools, and other institutions. And what's the most important, what are the most important issues concerning inclusive education is that there must be, first of all, relevant diagnosis in the closed place for students. Uh, we found that schools are much better to observe and diagnose the students than the centers where we have uh, diagnosed, uh, where we are diagnosing children. And content as well as methods of organization of teaching must be adapted, like Mr. Dotsa said, to the psychological and physical abilities of students. Possibility of using psychological and pedagogical help is a very important issue too and the possibility of receiving education in all types of schools by students with special educational needs in accordance with individual development, educational needs and skills. Uh, there are, um, we shall concentrate also of, on taking care of students with disabilities by enabling the implementation of an individualized education process. And in the education uh, law, we, there is also um, definition about financing of inclusive education system. Uh, in Poland, education is funded primarily from public sources. Public funds represent around 91% of funding in school education and around 79% in higher education. And those main resources of public funds are general and targeted state budget subsidies and grants, local government unit resources, and other public funds, like for example, funds coming from the labor uh, fund, and budgets of central government agencies allocated to the training of specific occupational groups. There might be some additional funds coming from European Union funds too. Um, I will present shortly the process of evolution uh, in which we are right now, um, maybe at the, uh, at the beginning of the third stage, uh, when talking about inclusive education in Poland. But uh, I need to admit that still all those uh, models are uh, currently running and ongoing in our educational system. So we have started. Uh, with a segregated model. And it was till the end of 90s, where there were mostly special schools, each for each disability. Later came an um, integration. And uh, integrated teaching, those are common classes available for small groups of students with disabilities in each. And both special schools and integration one are currently running uh, in our educational system. Now, I mean since 2010, uh, we started a ma more inclusive approach. In 2010, individual educational therapeutical program became obligatory for the one with special education needs. In 2015, the school 
since that, the school is obliged to give the employment for the special educational needs educator in mainstream schools if children with special educational needs attend to the school. Uh, before that, there was no obligation to give this kind of support. And in 2019, which is uh, uh, not very um, far from now, there are new requirements for teachers. Um, all special educational, uh, all special education teacher must be trained in the field of inclusive education, and preschool teachers are being prepared to work with pupils with special educational needs together in groups with other pupils. And uh, recently, uh, there are two ongoing projects concentrated only on uh, inclusive support inclusive approach. In 2019, we've started developing the specialist support centers for inclusive educational models. So we are in the middle of this um, of this project of uh, implementing uh, educational special specialist support centers for inclusive education. Of course, to provide the, to the child the relevant support in inclusive way, uh, we need an efficient diagnosis. And uh, the diagnosis of students with disabilities is carried out in psychological and pedagogical counseling centers while we think and we found that uh, the better place to observe the child is the school and the closest uh, uh, child surrounding. The diagnosis is made at the request of parents. So the school can only, the school, the teacher can only advise parents to ask for this diagnosis, but uh, we are not allowed to tell the parents to, that they shall go with a child to the um, center and to try to diagnose their child. Then the diagnosis is completed with a document called Special Educational Certificate. And on its base, the child may be referred to a special school or stay in a mainstream school with an inclusive approach. So this is the first step that um, the certificate of special education needs is obligatory uh, to start um, this um, kind of uh, support uh, or um, another treatment of a child. Then the child who holds a special educational certificate has undoubtedly right to education in the mainstream school closest to the place of residence and individualized education process allowing the student to achieve success to the best of his ability. But teachers do not compare a child with a disability to their peers but set separate educational goals for him in accordance with his psychological and physical abilities, taking into account the need to prepare the child for independence in adulthood and integration with peers. Um, but of course, there is something like curriculum, and for deaf students, which we are concentrating on today, uh, the curriculum is uh, pretty is the same, like in the mainstream schools, and like for children without an uh, education, special educational needs. But they have uh, some; they are allowed to have some uh, changes like um, their matriculation exam, their vocational exams are tailored to their needs. They might uh, not to have listening part of a foreign language during the matriculation exam. They have extending working, working time and they have the ability to use various dictionaries, but still they need to follow the same curriculum as the st student without special educational needs. Um, yes, but the, the curriculum uh, shall be adapted in such a way that the child can meet the educational requirements, and I think that's the most important thing. And um, also the, um, the learning process uh, should be uh, on the um, level available to the child, and uh, we shall give uh, the child the right to work on his own pace, and uh, on his own learning and psychological and physical abilities. 
There are also uh, special classes for a uh, child with a special educational certificate. And in the case of a uh, child at risk of social maladjustment or socially maladjustment children, social therapy and rehabilitation might be also Im Im implemented. And uh, coming to the general situation in the country regarding education for deaf and hard of hearing, I can say that there is about um, 10 to between 10 and 15 thousands of deaf right now and hard of hearing in uh, among the Polish students. It's less than half of a percentage of all the students. And usually hard of hearing children and um, attend integration or mainstream schools and they are uh, tend to be uh, treated in uh, inclusive way. While the deaf children with multiple disabilities are sent to special institutions, of which there are currently around 30 in Poland. But all the time, the number of students in special schools uh, is gradually decreasing. Uh, of course, the situation is the result of, uh, first of all, the educational policy in Poland, pursued for several years, the aim of which is the development of inclusive education. But maybe what is more important, uh, this is the situation is the result also of early intervention, which is currently dominated by the medical approach aimed at improving the child's sense of hearing, and, for example, uh, hearing aid or cochlear implants are uh, insertion. Uh, what we need to underline here is that uh, deaf people do not work in teams uh, dealing with early intervention. Um, generally speaking, uh, of course, uh, our uh, institution um, works in the field of uh, special uh, education, but we are trying to do as much as is possible uh, to find a way to include our uh, deaf and hearing impaired students in the um, hearing society. And uh, of course, we create a special individual educational and therapy program for each student, as in mainstream schools with an inclusive approach. Then um, we organize, for example, apprenticeship in workplaces so that potential employers and hearing associates have the opportunity to work, to work with a deaf person and vice versa. We organize also practical classes in vocational training centers together with hearing peers if only possible. Uh, in fact, there are some occupations uh, in which uh, we are training the students where the student may attend only uh, this uh, mainstream uh, vocational classes. Uh, the F of our school also gathered in voluntary group joins the citywide acts together with their hearing peers. There's a lot of actions going around in Krakow in which our students participate together with their hearing peers. And the students take part also in sports competition, trade fairs, and different events with their hearing peers. And also we organize professional internship uh, abroad in the hearing environment. And uh, quite often our students are very successful and sometimes even they are being offered a job abroad during this uh, professional internship. Coming to the end of my presentation, I would like to quote uh, both educators and parents' uh, opinion about inclusion itself in Polish educational system. And educators' uh, opinion uh, is that um, the, the possibility of inclusion is determined by other personal factors too. It means not only legislational and organizational. Those might be emotional development, cognitive abilities, motivation, physical development. And on the other hand, we have also parents' opinion, uh, which have an experience in this inclusive approach and saying that inclusive education in Poland does not provide a deaf child with the conditions set out in the United Nations Convention on the right of person with disabilities. So why? 
um, what are the reasons, uh, especially if we are, we are talking about parents' opinion. First of all, uh, the Polish educational system does not lead to social integration of deaf students at all. Um, it means that deaf children in the mainstream and in the integration schools feel being socially isolated due to communication problems. We have no classes of sign language given to regular mainstream uh, classes. And only a small percentage of deaf children really benefit from joint education together with their hearing peers. Usually, a lot of them uh, are being promoted to a higher grade, but only out of necessity. And those children quite often are being driven to secondary school for deaf people. So first of all, they attend mainstream or integrational unit, and where, um, where they are failed, they come to the special education center to find themselves better. And what happens to deaf students after education in integration uh, or mainstream schools is not monitored. And uh, we know, because we have a lot of contacts with uh, our graduates, that many deaf uh, people after these schools, I mean integration or mainstream one, suffer from a nervous, nervous breakdown or depression, depression even. And uh, the last thing, and I've uh, I'm pretty sure that it was uh, also something about what Mr. Dolce was uh, telling us, that graduates do not identify themselves with a hearing society. If we are talking about a deaf, really uh, hearing impaired person uh, feeling closely in the deaf society, so then when they are in the mainstream or integration unit, they don't feel um, together to as be a part of uh, the society. And after completing the education, many of YAF look for a deaf environment and learn sign language and uh, stays in uh, the uh, deaf uh, people's society, in the community. Um, as I already mentioned, um, in 2019, we have started to um, develop projects about uh, centers of uh, special support, of uh, inclusive um, support, and um, work to develop a new role for special schools as resource centers has begun in Poland under two European social funds projects. Uh, both uh, coming from 2019. The first is developing the specialist support centers for inclusive educational model, and the second one will be piloting the specialist support centers for inclusive education. Um, those centers will lend textbooks, uh, teaching materials, teaching aids, and specialist equipment to mainstream schools. And the project will develop the center's standards of equipment, lending rules, and financing mechanism. The project aims to support the ongoing reform process to implement inclusive education in Poland, and especially um, in the second phase of the project, the agency that uh, runs the project uh, will be supporting Ministry of Education efforts uh, to develop more inclusive legislation in a participatory way with national stakeholders. I wish to summarize my presentation with following conclusions. Um, what do we need, I mean as Polish uh, education, uh, to focus on in the future uh, to improve? The, the education is um, increasing awareness that the education system should be able to meet the needs of learners with diverse needs, uh, prepare teachers and others involved in the education process to pro provide really inclusive activities and promoting good practices, furthermore increasing dialogue between all stakeholders uh, what's also important, implementing new IT tools and digital easy-to-read educational materials. And finally, uh, running teacher activi uh, training activities and piloting the use of special education institutions as special resources centers for mainstream schools. And at the end, I wish to uh, leave you with this picture. 
And uh, I'm pretty sure that as a people working with uh, children with special educational needs, you won't have uh, trouble to understand uh, the meaning of the picture. And I wish that um, everyone, in, especially in educational unit, will remember that uh, we cannot set the same goals for everyone because there is a diversification between students. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention. Joanna, thank you very much. It was an interesting insight into inclusion in Poland and uh, comparing with other speakers. Very interesting. Thank you. Thank you very much. And if anyone has questions, please keep them, write them down, and there'll be an opportunity at the end of the day to ask questions to all speakers. Thank you. Um, thank you, Jana, for saving us some minutes <laughs> that uh, Enrico took. <laughs> so now we're still on, on, on the program. Uh, now let us move to Romania. And I would like to give the floor to Dorina Akira and Gabriela Kirtesh, two representatives from Romania who will share the experience of Romaine, and they will speak of, on educational and therapeutic programs in the Romanian educational system for students with hearing impairments. Hello. No. <laughs> but you can stand here. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Dorina, you can. I think you can. Okay, you can. Yes. okay. Yes. okay. 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 I will try to stay here to see me. Okay. Uh, my name is Dorina Kira. I'm special education teacher at uh, uh, Special Technological High School from uh, uh, Cluj-Napoca. Okay. Uh, my presentation co uh, contains uh, some theoretical and practical aspects uh, about the organization of educational services for students with hearing disabilities in Romania. And uh, after that, I will present, uh, present you some uh, uh, example of the organization of educational, therapeutic, and early intervention and support activities for family in our institution. In Romania, the educational option that a child with hearing disabilities has uh, are defined in national education uh, law and in the regulation of the organization and function, functioning uh, of special and special integrated education issued by the Ministry of Education. Uh, special and integrated uh, special and integrated special education uh, is an integrated part of the Romanian national curriculum uh, system and is coordinated by the Ministry of Education. The state guarantees the right to education to all uh, uh, children with special education needs. Uh, special education and integrated education are part of the national pre-university education system. Uh, Romanian le legislation stipulates that the school uh, integration of children with uh, special education needs is carried out in several forms. We have uh, special classes and groups for uh, children and students with disabilities uh, in uh, special schools unit or in boarding schools. We have also mainstream schools where, where the students can be integrated individually with or without educational support services. We have also groups or classes in health units in which children, students uh, with chronic disease or illness that require hospitalization periods longer than four weeks are hospitalized. And uh, also we, we uh, have uh, programs for students who uh, have to stay at home uh, for a determinate period, uh, itinerant schooling, on ad or other uh, school structures. 
Currently, the educational offer proposed two uh, programs for students with hearing disabilities. Um, attending special education in special schools for children with hearing impairment uh, or uh, with or without boarding schools, individual integration in mainstream schools, usually with uh, adapted educational programs or with a support teacher if uh, the students need support teacher. Educational levels for uh, children with hearing disabilities in Romania in mainstream school and in special school, we have the same uh, levels. Uh, that, uh, but in the mainstream schools, we have also university uh, education level. The curriculum, regular schools use planning uh, uh, curriculum, uh, curriculum plan provided in the national curriculum. For students with hearing disabilities, there is the possibility of uh, curricular adaptation. Did this uh, um, adaptation is established at, uh, as a result of students' assessment made by the School and Vocational Guidance Commission. This commission evaluates the students, issues a certificate or, of school orientation specifi specifying the type of educational support uh, the student needs, curricular adaptation or uh, support uh, teacher. The students can benefit upon re request from specific compensation therapies uh, performed by a, special, a speech therapist from a special school. Uh, the specific compensation therapies is based on the therapeutic intervention plan meant to respond to the special education requirements and psychopedagogical particularities of each student. In special school, uh, uh, you, uh, we use the special school uh, curriculum plans for students with disabilities. For example, for primary and secondary school, the curricular sc uh, plan included the following uh, curricular areas, language and communication, mathematics and science, social science, physical education, sports and health, art, technologies, school counseling and guidance, complex and integrated educational therapy, uh, specific and compensatory therapy. Uh, these therapies are provided individual or in small groups. And uh, for uh, high school, specialized subjects are added in high school depending on the spe specialization and profile. Sorry. Uh, the curriculum uh, in special school and in, and in mainstreams, there are some uh, difference. Special school um, curriculum plans differ from the regular uh, ones by differentiated and adapted specific competencies and by specific and adapted content and methodology. Uh, but the same general competencies are followed in order to give the students the chance of school integration in high school and university. Um, after uh, the uh, student finish the, the study, they have passed some exam. At the secondary uh, level, at the end of the secondary level, students participate in the national assessment. They have two uh, uh, exams uh, for Romanian language and mathematics. And at the end of high school, students also have to pass an exam, uh, the baccalaureate. They have uh, three uh, exams in Romanian lang language and uh, two more uh, exams depending on uh, educational profile. If the profile is uh, on social science, they have history uh, and uh, uh, one exam they have to choose one discipline. And if they... Um, follow uh, uh, science, they have to pass uh, mathematics and or biology on chemistry exam. Students with hearing disabilities receive uh, the same exam subjects as those without disabilities. They have the right to a sign language interpreter during the, the exam, 
uh, to the extension of the examination time and they do not participate in the listening test. Uh, in our school, uh, um, we have um, um, educational, therapeutic, early intervention and uh, family support uh, activities. Uh, special technological high school for hearing impaired uh, students in Cluj-Napoca is an institution with uh, over one uh, thirty years experience in field of education and rehabilitation of students with hearing disabilities. Uh, we have uh, every year um, almost 180 uh, students uh, from several counties. We are a boarding school. Uh, and they benefit from educational activities, special therapy activities that include speech therapy, language and communication development, hearing training, lip reading, educational audiology, psychometric uh, education. Uh, also, we offer complex and integrated therapies uh, uh, that include the development of personal autonomy, sensorial and cognitive stimulation, socialization, uh, ludic therapy and other extracurricular uh, activities. Uh, we have uh, some departments. Uh, we started with the Center and, uh, for Family Support and Early Intervention. After that, uh, we have kindergarten, primary school, secondary and high school. Center for Family Support and Early Intervention. The goals of the activities developed in this uh, center uh, are early inclusion of the children with hearing disabilities or with uh, associated disabilities in individual or group therapeutic programs. Uh, these programs um, uh, uh, we offer also individual, individualized programs for um, uh, students, children and students who are integrated in mainstream schools. And uh, we involve family in the educational process as a partner to support the, the development of the children. Uh, the beneficiaries of the uh, center are uh, uh, stu uh, children with uh, hearing and associated disabilities. We started from uh, five, six months, and uh, they uh, can come in this uh, center uh, um, to the end of the studies, uh, the high school. The parents are also the beneficiary and teachers from reg uh, for, for uh, mainstream schools who are working with uh, children with hearing disabilities. And uh, the activities in the center are uh, early intervention program, specific compensation and therapy, educational support, and family support. After uh, uh, a child uh, finished uh, the uh, early intervention uh, program at uh, three years, they can follow kindergarten in uh, mainstream educational system or, in, or kindergarten in special education system. 90% uh, uh, for the uh, children who are uh, follow the early intervention programs uh, go in uh, uh, mainstream education system with uh, specific, specific uh, compensation therapies until uh, uh, high school graduation in our center. And uh, only 10% uh, uh, keep going our, uh, uh, the program in our uh, kindergarten. In kindergarten, we have annually between 15 and 20 uh, children with hearing disabilities. Uh, and with associated disabilities. Uh, we organize uh, group activities and individual activities. Uh, um, they uh, uh, can benefit of hearing training, speech therapy, sen sensor sensorial verbal cognitive development, lip reading, psycho psychomotor development. And in group activities, they have educators and uh, special education teacher who 
organize activities in order to develop uh, language and communication, exploration of the environment, arithmetics, uh, uh, development of memory and attention, personal autonomy, so on. Uh, after a child uh, finished the kindergarten uh, in our uh, in our school, also they have the possibility to follow uh, uh, primary school in uh, mainstream school or in uh, a special education system. In our institution, only 10% of our uh, of the children who finish the kindergarten go in. Uh, uh, mainstream school and uh, the most of them uh, uh, keep going uh, with the primary school in our institution because most of the children uh, are integrated uh, in from the kindergarten in the mainstream institution in primary and secondary special education uh, we follow the curriculum for regular schools adapted to the specific of uh, disabilities. Also, we offer therapeutic activities and uh, extracurricular activities. We have uh, 90 children with hearing and associated disabilities in our uh, primary and secondary uh, school. And after uh, the, a child uh, finish the secondary school, they can follow high school in our institution. Uh, uh, also, here can, they can benefit uh, of specific compensation therapies in order to develop, um, uh, to develop uh, uh, communication skills uh, for also hearing training, uh, sign language, uh, or uh, um, hearing training depends on the, uh, disab the disabilities, okay. and or uh, they can follow vocational school in other institutions, uh, but most of the students uh, uh, go to the high school in our institution. High school, uh, we uh, set up uh, this uh, level e since September 2007. Uh, the students study according to mainstream school curriculum. Uh, this um, uh, level offers to the students possibility to obtain a PC operator technician, technician certificate. And we have in each year 45 students with hearing disabilities uh, in our high school. And after they graduate high school, they can go to university, post-secondary education, or uh, employment. Uh, as I told you, we don't have uh, universities for uh, special uh, uh, for hearing, uh, for sorry, for deaf or hearing impaired students, so they they go to the university with uh, hear uh, students, but they uh, they uh, they have some adaptation in the university and they have some uh, um, uh, classes with uh, sign language interpreters. In our uh, students, uh, in our institution, uh, we started with integration in the mainstream school of the students in uh, uh, 19, sorry, I made a mistake, 1968, not 1868, when the Center of Hearing and Hearing uh, Rehabilitation was established. This center was uh, set up in collaboration with uh, Babesh Boy University and Suvag Polyclinic in Zagreb. The professionals for the center used verbotonal uh, method uh, to facilitate the learning of uh, verbal language by, child, by children with uh, deafness and hearing loss. Uh, in, the, in that period, the uh, oral uh, method predominated. Over time, many students have benefited uh, from educational and therapeutic uh, services in the center, and they being successfully integrated into mainstream schools, high schools, and, then, and universities. And since uh, 2003, the services have been expanded with early intervention programs. 
uh, the center now uh, call, is now called Family Support and Early Intervention Center. Uh, now, depending on the particularities of the disabilities, uh, our educational approach combines auditory verbal therapy, sign language, finger spelling, lip reading, and total communication. We, we use uh, with the students all these uh, uh, communication methods because we have uh, deaf students in our institution, we have hard of hearing students, we have students with uh, cochlear implants, we have students, uh, deaf students from deaf family, we have stu deaf students from uh, hearing uh, with hearing parents, so they choose different options, and we try to to offer them all the uh, method to develop uh, their communication and uh, to facilitate the best uh, uh, school and social integration. Thank you. Thank you, Irina. Uh, because you also saved some a little uh, some time, I, I would like to ask you one question. Uh, when we, you talked about the Center for Family Support and uh, early intervention and the group of uh, of specialists work with families, the, in that group, are any deaf people? I mean, the members of deaf community involved in in working with with the family? No. No, we don't have um, deaf community members in our staff working with, uh, with the families. We don't have. Uh, we have uh, in our institution only hearing uh, uh, professional, professionals. So, and, and then another question, in the, in the primary school and the secondary school, do you have any deaf teachers? No, we don't have uh, deaf teachers in our school. So Only hear, hearing teachers, and they uh, follow uh, sign language classes, and all the, 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 the teachers know sign language. We, um, uh, we have uh, special education teachers. They uh, graduated uh, uh, fa a faculty of uh, special uh, psych uh, psychopedagogy, and uh, after that they uh, learn to use sign language. Okay, and also we have a, a specialized teacher, mathematics, Romanian, and they also uh, learn sign language. We don't have a sign, language, a sign language interpreters in our school, and uh, currently we don't have uh, deaf uh, uh, teachers, unfortunately. <laughs> When you need to, to use the microphone. No, or you can come here. In, in your desk. Okay. So, uh, universities in Romania started to offer support uh, for deaf students only a few years ago. So, in all Romania, maybe we have um, five, six deaf professionals with university studies. We hope in the future to have more, but that was the problem or why uh, our students, uh, after graduating the high school, uh, they didn't have access to, to university level because of the um, sign language support. University started now, and we hope to to increase the number of deaf professionals. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'd now like to welcome our next speakers from France, Christine Jeffrey from the Centre Charlotte Blouin in France, and Christophe Cadetia from Ersam in France. Good morning.
So good morning. I'm a French director of IRSAM organization. I've been working for 15 years with deaf children. And it is important for me to share you my experience of inclusion in institution. So I will try to develop different points explaining the movement of inclusion in France. The two important laws which were the foundation of inclusion in France, the point of view of the professionals on the consequences of this big change of the way we used to support people with disabilities in France. In France, specialized establishments for deaf children support and educate nearly 12,000 children in specialized classes located in mainstream schools. For decades, the French government funded establishments supporting deaf people aged 3 to 20s, 20 of their premises. Beautiful residences, sometimes isolated in very nice areas of religious origins. Then, from the 80s, at the instigation of a few parents, children were grouped together in mainstream schools near their homes. Specialized teachers then left their institutes to go and teach in ordinary schools. The benefit for these young deaf children has been remarkable. The deaf were the first in France to benefit from this inclusive movement. Integration became the rule. Deaf children had to be welcomed like the others in all the schools of the Republic. From 1985, the model started to change. Integration became a model, and then, 25 years later, inclusion starts to be the rule. The French legislator has followed this development, encouraging ordinary schools to open classes to deaf children and later to children with other disabilities. The first important law in France was in 2002, which promoted the person with disabilities as a citizen with rights, and not only as a person who is not able to take his own decision and to choose his life. The second important law in 2005 which went further from the first law, giving the first definition of disability, which declared the society has to adapt its tools to promote the active participation of people with disability in all the area of society. That means schools, house living, accommodation, employment, accessibility to leisure, involvement as citizenship. At an international level, we have the Convention of the United Nations on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. France ratified in, two, uh, in 2010. Commits France to transform its public policy regarding people with disabilities issues. In France nowadays, this means concretely inclusive school from the youngest age with professional training in disability, independent living by construction of suitable housing, creation of service platforms able to analyze needs to offer individuals adapted and coordinated responsive. Now, in France, inclusion, empowerment, and autodetermination are the rule. So let me show an image, a plan, which illustrates what I was telling you. You can see all the points of colors. It's a good image, I think, about inclusion. What does it mean? So let me show how does it work for a French organization. When we receive a person with disability, first of all, we analyze his needs. And then, 
we, make, we try to make a project with him. It's important, it's always with him, never with him. And then we try to sign a contract and we follow, we follow him at, till the end of the contract. This new model wasn't easy to admit, to understand, and sometimes it's still not easy for some French professionals and some training centers of professionals. So, in our institute, we have a commitment, a guideline to manage these teams of professionals with some important legal tools. My mission as a director is to make them comfortable with this new model of inclusion and to carry on a better understanding of this challenge, because it's a challenge. But as a professional, I have some questions about inclusion. Yesterday, you know, I visited your national institution for deaf in Vilnius. And really, I was impressed by what you do with young deaf children here in Lithuania. And I'm sure that inclusion doesn't mean losing our knowledge and technicity. We have to offer the best to deaf children. We must not forget that deafness is a special disorder we require technicity on professionals. So I let Christine follow. Good morning. I am Christine Jeffrey. For a long time ago, I was a specialist teacher in an institute for deaf children. And since 2018, I am a manager of individual inclusion services in a city on the west of France. Today, I will tell you about the new models of individual and collective inclusion for deaf children. Following the various law that we have, we find that the word inclusion is based on the choice which is given to family and which is now included in all your approach, particularly with regard to inclusive education. In France, the law is therefore underpinned with the self-determination of the person with a disability. And when this person is a child, is therefore constructed with his expectation and personal choice of his parents. It is a personal request driven by in experience a life course which must be taken into account in all its dimensions, relational, psychological, social, and for children's school, to allow the development of relevant and efficient inclusion. To help identify all these expectations, a new institution was uh, also created in 2005, the House of Disabled, Disabled Persons, which lists all the needs of people, children of adults, their needs, their entitlement. The House of Pe for People with Disabilities centralizes all requests and her things. After passing through the committee, it goes to our specialist center with ensure the correct follow-up. The notion of proximity to schooling, proximity to the place of residence of the family, is the second point introduced by the, this law. Now, our special art services support and organize this request. Any children with disability must be able to be included in the school in their neighborhood, regardless of their age and level of schooling. The ge geographical dimension quickly comes in into play in this choice of local inclusion. Requests come from all over and they require a lot of logical organization for our specialized establishment in a specific area by the place of residence of the family. 
It is important to know the geographical and administrative limits of this area of activity. Then, is, if it's necessary to know all professional is in this area, school, administrative services, town halls, medical center, to complement existing services and not encroach of the field of action. Our services, therefore, were strong constraints in deploying and developing their activity. All services become outside the world of the establishments. All of this must be clearly defined of our institutions who are in charge of inclusion. Indeed, before creating a services or deploying support, it is important to ensure that these services is not already organized in the similar way, but by another act, act, sorry, uh, in the similar way, but another actor in this area. In logistics, the model, the new model drives a need to deploy professional outside the world the world of establishments needing to think about manage employment contracts involving a certain mobility, manage a large fleet of vehicles, manage meal and travel expenses for professionals, manage digital resources for remote communication. These points introduce a new element, the notion of partnerships and agreement with various partners in the child of environment. Indeed, this existing professional can, at any moment in the course of a young person, be a level of support for our establishment. A contract is agreed after exchange and meeting. This gives the objective and the framing of the world of if of each of these professionals. For example, we have agreement program with each school in which the child is welcome. The programs, the name of inclusion professional is, are stipulated. We also establish agreement near the place of residence of the family with freelance speech therapist, with psychomotorist therapist, if we don't have these resources in our establishment. The best include of child with a disability in his local school, it is necessary to make a precise assessment of the child's needs. If the young person is already in school when registering in our services, the view of the mainstream teacher must be given in an evaluation of the young students. School evaluation guides have given created by the Ministry of the Education in charge of the mainstream school. They consist of the riches point by point of the autonomy of the child, factor of success, difficulties identified, autonomy in learning, reading or writing, social aspects, as well as the languages used and understood by the child. Understanding is one of the most important aspects for our professional specializing in deafness. In addition, the knowledge and evaluation of deafness professional must be through to follow cross-referencing speech therapy assessment, ENT audiogram, medical report, specialized education assessments, all, all from the basis of every file of the children in individual in inclusion. The professional scale makes focus of their cognitive progress, the expected deviation from the norm in school curricula, the pace of learning, and also social interactions. Do they make friends? And benchmarking with peers. 
From the first assessments, objectives are set. Compensation, adjustment of schooling, adjustment to exam, human assistance alongside the person with the young person in class, technical assistance, perhaps allocation for a computer and digital application, or accessibility, access for all to everything in complete safety. For example, providing cute speech or sign language to allow the student to access to the curriculum. The model, this is a model where the child is completely about inclusion in a regular school. The observation following this evaluation, deaf children who choose oral or written language project, implanted or not, with good protective gains, feel, fit well into inclusive choice of individual inclusive paths. We support them from kindergarten to high school and higher education. In connection with this inclusive model, we must put in place a lot of action with all partners. Awareness, information on deafness for all the professionals involved with the early impairment shield. Specialized professional became ambassador and expert in the in this team of disability on mainstream school side. Individual support projects from each child is required. Intervention by specialists for the adaptation to early impairment of the child concerned. Importance of knowing the official programs and the repercussion of deafness in particular on the language and on the expected learning methods. Knowing how to guide towards inclusion to allow closer contact with peers and more substantial specialized support when necessary. Listening to the child and his family, his support project is established with the parents and the specialized center because became the heart of the, of the professions, the basis of all our professional activity. Collective inclusion needs, specialized needs, that the mainstream school cannot provide. Very specific communication and learning needs, for example, sign language. Need for justify and necessary support, children with associate, associate disabilities. Collective intrigant integration models, a community of young people with the same disability is welcome in the same mainstream school. An agreement is signed at the start of the school year to describe the timetable, the time of inclusion in the mainstream group, is class reception possible in sport, art, science, mathematics, specialized supervision time, or even specialized individual sessions time, speech therapist most often, take out of class time, the term of compensation, school assessment, adapted or not, possible visual, visual heads. The vigilance points and training points. The vigilance points for the child. We must make the difference between the language of communication and the language of learning. Vigilance to need to communicate in group in a group between deaf peers according to the languages of communication choose sign language or, or oral language. Psychological support to help build the identity of children who are often isolated in her family or in a school group. Vigilance for the professionals, 
the need to train expert professional to become resources professional. To summarize, the key word for the new people is training pathway. Individual inclusion, we make bridge always possible from one to other according to the needs. For example, we see that individual inclusion is mostly choice in elementary school and collective in college because students need to meet peers. The key, word for, the key word for the professional is partners, partnerships. To link family with specialized professionals and mainstream teacher and also link with medical center. And key word for the services manager is adaptability. We must manage the profile of our professional, scientist, literary, to assign them to the profile of the young people to be accompanied in our area of activity. In conclusion of the conclusion, <laughs> with inclusion now, specialist size professional will be knowledgeable and flexible. Thank you for the interpreter. <laughs> Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Christoph. Thank you, Christoph. Thank you, Christine. Uh, it was interesting to hear how inclusion works in France, and I think what came over very strongly was the uh, aspect of the individual, that all the uh, services and support provided is linked to each individual child to make sure they have success in that situation. So thank you very much. The uh, Pagal program. According to the program, I'm waiting for you to put on headphones to start speaking Lithuanian. According to our program, we have still some time, and therefore we have some free time before lunch. Therefore, I'll give you some practical information. All the participants of uh, the conference are invited to, to have a break with coffee, tea, and snacks. And I will ask the representatives of the Daiva. So this is Na, some practical information. And we would like to practically use it. I know that we have some guests from other cities and towns. Therefore, the questions answer session could be made now. If you have any questions to the speakers in the first part of our conference. So if you want to ask a question, please uh, raise your hand. And I would like to ask uh, some language interpreters to help us here. So please raise your hand in order to ask a question. Please use the microphone. Should I speak in Lithuanian or English? The way you like. Um, I can speak so both. So, firstly, I would like to ask, uh, actually, all of the uh, all of the presenters. Um, a lot was uh, spoken about the need for an uh, for educational integration. But uh, it was also mentioned about social isolation, and I was wondering what measures your country takes to uh, provide social integration for deaf children uh, who are integrated into mainstream schools. For example, if they have a sign language interpreter, um, what helps them play with other children during break time, for example? You, I, I don't think the sign language interpreter can go and tell other children to uh, let them play on the slide or something like that. So uh, 
um, what measures can be taken, what measures are being taken, and what measures would you recommend for Lithuania to take um, uh, in in uh, in this specifically area of social integration? Um, so who who will take the floor and and answer? Okay. Yes, I can just um, an example for uh, to to your question. In France, uh, yes, it's true, but the children hasn't got always someone uh, translators or assistant during free time. Um, but it's not always necessary, you know, uh, for for a child. It's important sometimes to be alone with other child, and uh, for ch the children has got a kind of a res resilience on the capacity to adapt uh, himself with other children. And um, but how professional must uh, uh, be present somewhere, not too close. <laughs> but uh, to help them if necessary. But it's, I think it's important to let the, the child alone sometimes. It's not, uh, he's not in danger in a, in a, in a school, uh, in a mainstream school, you know, so. But always, the, our team is not far, they are, not, they are close to him, but uh, I don't know if I am. Do they uh, do they teach like uh, sign language, just the rudiments of sign language, to the hearing children that are in the class with the deaf child? Yes, yes, yes. It depends the language, linguistic project of the children. It can be in oral pedagogy or sign language or pedagogy system. Yeah. Thank you. Enrico. Um, yes, I completely agree with Christophe. Uh, deaf child are not in danger in, with hearing children, uh, but of course we have to remember that inclusion means to uh, rebuild the paradigm of teaching and uh, of the environment. So we have to think always not to provide, not always to provide services, but to change the environment. One way to be done is to teach sign language to the others, not to provide sign language interpreting in the BRAC because during the break they should be alone with mates, but the mates have to be able to communicate with them. So we have to change the paradigm. The, the paradigm is our, our eyes have to be focusing on the environment, not always on the deaf child, but on the environment where the deaf child lives. From, from, from this uh, answer, I then have another question. How willing are the uh, teachers of these mainstream schools or, or other students in mainstream schools to learn sign language too? Um, well, first of all, I have to say that uh, bilingual uh, classes and schools are very, very rare because 95% of children are only oral. So this is just to, we are not speaking big number, but for that small uh, number of bilingual children, uh, for instance, often sign language is a subject in the school. In my school it's mandatory, it's just that you have to, to learn, it's like Italian. And um, uh, in the kindergarten, for instance, in our kindergarten, I, we have a deaf teacher, he just sign, he doesn't speak to everyone. So the children grow up knowing that with someone you speak, with someone you sign, and it doesn't matter if you are hearing or deaf. So this can be a model, but of course uh, it's a model for a small minority of deaf, with, that are the deaf from deaf families. They are, 5% is a generous percentage, probably they are 2% or 3% of the deaf child, no deaf children. Okay, I can tell you how does it look uh, in Poland. Uh, so maybe two things. Uh, first, as our um, one of our deaf professionals uh, recognized that, um, on, of course, we do not measure and we do not have any tools to measure uh, the, the 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 feeling and the 
the being of the feeling of being as, uh, isolated. This is the basically, and um, as one of our deaf professionals says, uh, we think that uh, the children in mainstream school should be uh, familiar with sign language, with basic basic uh, knowledge of sign language. That it would be easier, uh, but from the very primary uh, primary school, and then uh, there will be no obstacles. So, like uh, I'm uh, repeating all the time, what uh, Enrico says that we shall focus not only on the child that we sh we wish to include in the um, hearing society, but we need to. F uh, look on the hearing society and try to find a solution for them to understand the, the deaf one. This is the first thing. So like giving, uh, basically giving the uh, relevant knowledge of sign language, uh, for example, even in uh, primary schools. Of course, from my personal point of view, I know that uh, children are being taught about different uh, disabilities and in the first stages of primary school, they have but it's like one class, one, one lesson uh, with basics of uh, sign language, just to be familiar what is it. But of, of course it's not uh, efficient and it's not enough. But um, the other thing I wanted to point out is the situation in our center. As I already explained, we are a center for deaf students, but in fact right now, because we, since a couple of years, we also accept uh, students with aphasia, and those students have nothing to do with deafness, in fact. And uh, usually they do not know sign language at all. So when they come to our school, and quite often they are the majority of the class, uh, then we need to teach them sign language. Because, for example, in our school there are also deaf people, deaf, deaf professionals. We have this uh, lucky to have deaf professionals working uh, in our school because since many years uh, this is it's possible to, to have uh, special assistance at the university. So a lot of our students, of course those who are good enough uh, like to, to reach the level of university level goes to the university and then some of them even come to our um, our school so uh, and for uh, all of our students, also for them, those who are not uh, deaf at all and who has nothing uh, common with uh, hearing impaired but has this uh, special um, difficulties which is aphasia, we have uh, sign language classes. And we found that this is very uh, successful uh, for them. Well, they, they want to, to, to communicate. Of course, um, I don't have, uh, I mean, our institution has no experience with uh, smaller children because uh, we are um, school, the secondary school. So, for, of course, for teenagers, uh, it's uh, much more difficult, but not only because some of them have some special needs, but it's a difficult age. But learning sign language is a, is a base in both of those uh, um, examples for me. Uh, are, are there to do we have more questions? Any more questions? Sure. Uh, <coughs> While my main job is a musician, I want to ask a question. What about inclusion into teaching music in other countries? In Lithuania, we have... Uh, we're doing quite well in this area in including children in music. What about other countries? How do you? What do you do about the inclusion of children into music? Uh, children with cochlear aids uh, can well int uh, can integrate well into music schools. 
atstovai. But maybe a rep uh, representative from Kara Foreign Countries. countries. Well, I could command that uh, in dead schools we don't have music, we just have rhythmics. So, rhythmics, we have great examples, national examples, where deaf people win contests of dancing. In our school, we don't have music, but we have rhythmics, we have dance, and, and teachers are very successful in teaching rhythmics and dance and to walls. So this is our experience from Lithuania. Yes. I, I try to <laughs> I try to explain um, in English. In in France, in the specialized uh, center, we use uh, a lot of music because uh, silence reads. It's very important for deaf children, and uh, usually the specialized teacher and speech therapist. Use very often music and 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 read and phonetic and um, verbotonal method and so on. Use music, but um, in the the thematic of music in curriculum, it's more difficult because in mainstream in France uh, between the college, but in elementary too we must learn the history of music and civilization. So we need to have teacher support to explain this uh, history. But if, uh, if there is music and so on, we try to, uh, in, to make inclusion in curriculum and in the music course. Can I follow up to that? Can I ask also, um, in this music uh, education for deaf children in these countries, uh, do they make use of uh, not just like uh, implants or something, but actually uh, technology to, uh, advances that allow deaf people to feel that vibrations or uh, allowing them to take off their shoes to feel the vibrations in the floor or things like that? There's a lot of very interesting work being done around that. Uh, do your schools uh, take advantage of those things? Yes, we use usually um, uh, vibration flow. It means we, we've got uh, in some specific rooms, we've got the materials like that the children, the deaf children can feel the vibration and it's very important to, to use it. To, to develop their uh, rhythm and uh, in, in phonetic also it's it's useful yeah for phonetic uh, topic. The, uh, yeah, yes. Um, yes. Um, normally the speech frequency range of hearing for the deaf is what's assessed, and we decide the child is deaf. But the frequency range of music is much bigger. And so very often, deaf children can hear music where they can't hear speech very well. And they, you see deaf children listening to pop music and other things loudly, they, they enjoy that. And of course, in education settings, we have sprung floors, vibration, rhythm work, um, and so on. May I add something? Okay, may I? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, so, of course, and uh, our students love music and uh, hear a lot of music. But when coming directly to uh, learning music and uh, subjects that are really uh, related to the music, so our deaf colleague has uh, experience uh, during her uh, studies at the university. And uh, during the studies, uh, there were classes of uh, voice emission, uh, vocal em emission, obligatory. And for her, it was uh, difficult that she had to follow uh, the same classes like the others. And in fact, she asked uh, the, the, the teacher uh, to have individual classes because she was ashamed of uh, expressing her uh, her voice 
And uh, when coming to uh, including music and those different areas into into the the world, um, we shall also pay attention, for example, to the theater and the drama. And uh, like uh, this is very important for um, deaf uh, to take part in uh, in in theater to 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 present uh, something, but. Uh, they wish um, their um, rights would be also uh, in some way accepted. So, for example, they wish to have um, the possibility of expression, not only by the sound, because it's something that they cannot express. They can express by, the, uh, by their uh, body and the general expression, but not the sound. So, uh, of course, we, we can... Uh, um, provide them music training, etc. But on the other hand, uh, probably they won't be able to do the same, but they wish to do something that is like parallel. And this, uh, the expression, the drama, the pantomime, and like uh, also uh, in, uh, in uh, our institutions, sometimes students have a possibility to show to the um, local community uh, sign language interpreting uh, songs, so songs made with sign language. Uh, okay, so I would like to finish this discussion for now. We will continue later, so have a nice coffee break and lunch, and we'll come back at uh, 1.15.